Hello, everybody. Hey, last time we talked, we talked about how important it was for the Osage Nation to diversify its revenue. We needed to get multiple sources for revenue coming into the Osage Nation, and we needed to grow that and make it bigger so that there was more funds and resources available for other benefits that we want to provide the Osage people, you know, like elder care, uh, education, cultural things, you know, all that takes resources and money and we need to expand that pie. But not only that, but we need to get it from different resource, different locations, different sources. If Governor Stitt and the coronavirus have done anything at all, it show us how vulnerable having a single source of revenue, meaning or the, like the gaming revenue, is how, how risky that is, how vulnerable that is. So we need to diversify into multiple different things. And last time we talked about a bunch of different options, including, uh, you know, agribusiness, uh, including hemp, banking, uh, tourism. There, there were a lot of different options we talked about last time. But one of the things I've heard a lot of people say is that, oh, we have to shut down all the LLCs. We have to close all the LLCs. Well, LLCs, you know, they're, they're, they're not in and of itself bad. And, and I want to come back and we're going to talk about LLCs. But the problem with the LLCs is pretty straightforward. And that problem is that the LLCs need to be transparent and more importantly, they need to be held accountable. Right now, they're not accountable to the level that we need them to be. And, and I think this item right here is the single most important thing that we do. But you can't hold them accountable if they're not transparent. If they've got all these things going on in the background, in the backroom tables and under the table and things, you can't, and I'm not saying that our LLCs do that, but you can't hold them to a standard if they don't know what that standard is. You know, my a mentor a long time ago, and when I first started in, in the field of business, um, I had a mentor that said, Jim, when you're managing people and managing things, be careful what you measure because that's what you're going to get. Okay, so think about it. If we measure... Uh, you know, what the short-term profit is in the next 30 days, they're going to maximize the short-term profit for the next 30 days, even if it risks the long-term health of the business. So you've got to be careful with that. But like I said, a quick recap, LLCs are not good nor bad. They're, they're not either one. They are just what they are. They need to exist because Osage businesses have to react very rapidly to ever-changing business climate. And because of that, they need to have a certain degree of autonomy. But that autonomy cannot be absolute. If it's absolute, then they might as well be a sole proprietorship. The, the concept of an LLC is just that. It's just a business structure. It's not good or bad in its own right. It's like any other business structure, uh, you know, uh, an a C Corp, like a large corporation, Exxon Mobil, you know, where they've got shares, you know, preferred and common shares. You've got S Corp, sole proprietors, partners, and limited liabilities. And there's some advantages, and we talked about it last time, about the pros and cons of the LLCs. The biggest thing for the Osage Nation is the LLC protects the Osage Nation from business liability. When, when something goes wrong, they always sue the person with the deepest pockets. And if we have an LLC, it becomes its own entity. And I'm not a tax, I'm not a lawyer, you know, and there's plenty of those in, in around, the, around town, but they'll tell you that an LLC is an entity of itself and it provides some degree of protection from the Osage Nation from being sued for business liability. Okay, now I've also heard people say, well, uh, we've attempted transparency in the past. Yep, we have. LLCs have been required to produce reports. But the real interesting thing about that is that these reports, uh, they actually get sent to Congress. 
and not the public. So these LLC reports are, they only often have sensitive information and that is necessary. And sometimes you don't want that submitted to the public, but there needs to be some oversight, some review of what that sensitive information is by some buddy that has a vested interest and will keep it quiet for sensitive information, but has the public's best interest at heart. The rest of it needs to be made public. It needs to go to the public. See, there's been no real public review of the process. So how do we, what do we do about transparency going forward? Well, the first thing you need to do is, is we need to make sure the LLCs are required to provide, not the Osage Congress, the Osage people, a quarterly report of what's going on with their ongoing operations and LLCs. This is done all the time in major corporations. They produce an annual report. The annual report is a public facing document that goes out and it identifies the current and accounting financial reports like income statements, expense reports, accounts payables, receivables, balance sheets, budgets versus actual expenditures. Any, all these accounting functions and, and financial reporting that provides some insight into what is going on in the business. Uh, the large corporations that sell shares of common and preferred stock have to produce that for investors so that they can look and evaluate where their company's going. We need to do that same type of thing for LLCs and report to the Osage people. And included in that, and this is really important, we need to be able to have budgets and projections of what they're budgeting to spend and what they're expecting to come in. And that's tied to their current and future business plan. They need to have a short term, moderate or intermediate and long term goals and business plans. We as the Osage people need to be able to see what an LLC is planning on doing in the next six months to a year, in the next three years, the next five or 10 years. We need to be able to see those business plans so that we know that they are in line with the strategic objectives that we, the Osage people, put forth in our strategic planning process. But it's not enough to have just transparency. I mean, transparency is really, really important. You know, there's an old adage that if you want to see the cockroaches, turn the light on. That's what transparency is, is the light. And I want to tell you that there's no system in place that's going to come absolutely guaranteed to stop evil people from doing evil things. And I'm not saying our board members are evil. I'm just saying that there is no system in place that's going to stop every form of corruption. But currently the process is plagued with politics. You know, somebody gets appointed to a board because it's a political favor. There's a sense of entitlement with some of the board members. Well, my name is, my family name is ABC, so I'm entitled to be on this board. That's not the case. Boards are not always made up right now of the best people with the right experience and the right industry skill set to properly manage and run a large enterprise. So what's really needed is true accountability. We need to have real oversight, not just a rubber stamp. We need to have an LLC oversight board that is not political. And we're gonna talk more about this in a minute. But the LLC board's compensation needs to be tied to performance somehow. If they are losing money year in, year out, that why should we compensate them more and more? We need to be able to reward good performance and good performance is being profitable. This LLC oversight board needs to have the ability to hire and fire board members from the LLC. What that does, it takes the LLC board members out of the political realm 
and puts it into the business realm. And li lastly, board members need to be subject to a reappointment of like a three or four year term, some multi-year term. So like I said, this LLC oversight board needs to be a three member board. And the reason for three members is because you can't have a tie with three members. Uh, members are appointed, they should be appointed as follows. The executive branch should get to appoint one member. The legislative branch gets to appoint one member. And the final member of that three member board needs to come from a non-political appointment or maybe an election. There's a lot of different options for how to get that third member. But keep in mind that the idea is for that member to be non-political. They need to come from the public and they need to represent the Osage people. Again, real key, it needs to be non-political. There's a lot of options how we get that third member. You know, and the, here are some of them and I'm, I'm definitely open to any type of suggestions on how we could do it. Maybe it comes from an, a committee of elders. Uh, maybe it comes from, they're selected from, you know, by the three district committees. Maybe it's selected by the public. There's all kinds of options and ways to do it. But the important thing, again, is to keep in mind is that needs to be a non-political appointment. And they need to have the best interest of the Osage people at heart. So like I said, I, I'm seeing some structure like this. You have that three member oversight board, jointly appointed one each with staggered multi-year terms by the executive branch, the Osage Congress and the Osage people. They would have direct oversight in appointing, hiring, firing and managing and overseeing all of the profit focused LLCs. So the ability of this oversight board the individual LLC board members, like um, the Osage Nation, um, the, the gaming, the Osage LLC, the, all the individual LLC board members need to be compensated based upon some sliding scale determining the profitability of the, of the LLC. Uh, it, it would be and the reason a sliding scale, it has to be some magnitude ordered. So if you have uh, an LLC that operates in the hundreds of millions of dollars, like our gaming uh, commission, or a, a smaller LLC that only has, you know, $100,000 in, in operating expenses, their compensation can't be the same. So there has to be some sliding scale. Any board appointments will be confirmed by the Osage Congress as is currently the practice. And you have that multi reappointment every multi-year and that's rotating so that you don't have a complete turnover in every uh, or complete turnover every year. However, and this is critical, in the case of excessively poor performance, the LLC oversight board has to have the ability to fire any and all board members, even if it does cause complete turnover. Cause sometimes that's exactly what you want is a complete turnover. This thing has gotten so far off the rails. We need to restructure it from the top down. You know, really, if you think about it, this election is really pretty simple. If you like the way the Osage nation does business, Hey, go vote for the incumbents. I encourage you to do that because if you vote for the incumbents, you're going to get the exact same thing you've currently got now, but, but if you think like I do, and a lot of us do that, we need to change the way the Osage nation does business. Then why wouldn't you vote for a candidate that has the track record, the experience, the knowledge and the education, to make the LLCs profitable. Again, focus on the experience, knowledge, and track record. So that's why I'd like to ask for your vote. I ask that you vote for me, Jim Trumbly for the Osage Nation Congress. Thanks a lot for listening. 
again, if you have any questions or comments or want to make a suggestion, have an issue, anything you want to talk about, get a hold of me, contact me. You can get me by email, Facebook website. I'm all over the place getting a hold of me. I don't think it'll be a really tough time. So I encourage you. I love to talk to you guys to find out what you're thinking, find out what your suggestions are. And next time we're going to talk about how important and how we can get some elder care. So until next time, talk to you later.